this is the best thing that anyone can ever do. Like, it's incredible. And you meet 200, you make 200 friends who all are just incredible. It's like, I can't say it enough that this love guy on YouTube that's, you know, fuck that shit. This is like a magic solution. It's nuts. I um, got divorced and I went to the bookstore and I bought every single book on mental health issues. <laughs> no, on just like how to like sort your life out. Um, and most of it was pretty heavy reading. And then Matthew's book was the lightest one out of all of them, but it made me, in a very short space of time, realise that I was going to be okay. And then when that email came and said, you can speak to one of the trainers, I just thought, okay, well, I'll just have a chat. Um, and em Emma was amazing, absolutely amazing. I have a lot to thank Emma for. And it made me realise as well that like your friends around you, obviously you love your friends very much and your friends kind of try to give you good advice. But I realised that actually, you know, when you're in a bad place, people kind of like to keep you there, not out of malice, but you know, I wasn't in a great place and my friends would just kind of say to me, it's okay, you're healing, just take your time. But that's like five years of taking my time. Like no one said, Soraya, listen, pick yourself up, wash, go out, brush your teeth, like, you know, go and like, you know, find a hobby, go and walk, go and sit in a cafe, go and talk to somebody. You know, just nobody kind of said that. They were like, it's okay, it's, you know, just sit there, be depressed. You're healing, you're healing. So then it kind of makes you feel like, okay, yeah, it's okay that I'm just healing. And then Emma was just like, no, it's not okay. What the hell are you doing with your time? You're wasting your time. Um, so yeah, I, ne I really needed to hear that. It gave me a massive kick. You know what? You did something for yourselves that most people never will. Most people will never put this amount of energy into themselves. They're so busy worrying about what they're supposed to be doing, what everyone else expects them to do. But what's so important is we take time to actually assess what do we want? What do we want to do? Where do we want to go? Most people will never give themselves the gift that you've given yourself this week. I was here for that one, like how to, you know, do my career, how to expand, you know, my, you know, job and, um, you know, how to kind of, I don't know, date, you know, those things. I wasn't here for that thing. Um, but that thing came up and I, it absolutely floored me because that's like next level. I have to be the type of person that goes out there and keeps going for this because fuck, I'm only here once. I gotta go and do this. I gotta be the kind of person who goes and does this, who goes after what I want, who goes and flirts and talks to people and builds relationships because I don't wanna be one of those people. Regardless of whether it works out, I can't be one of those people who at 90 years old, the badge of honor I wear is that I didn't get rejected as much as other people. That can't be my badge of honor in my old age is that I didn't get my heart broken much. You know, I've pushed love away an awful lot in my life. Uh, when guys have, have nice guys have liked me, I've thought that they should be with a nice girl. Uh, and I've gravitated towards guys that um, aren't particularly savory because I feel like that, that you know, that's more, um, more, I'm more deserving of them or, I don't know, they'll be able to cope not that I would ever tell them the truth, but somehow, like, if they've had a bit of a tarnished past or whatever, that somehow we're a better fit than me being with, like, I don't know whatever a nice guy is, but someone who hasn't had any thing like that in their life. And they've been very, very, very loving, very, very kind, very nice guys who have wanted to show me love, and I have, like, pushed it away to a really quite strong extent. If there's something that has haunted me for a long time, if there's something I've held on to, if there's something I've allowed to become suffering when it need have only been pain, the pain's inevitable, right? You heard that quote, pain is inevitable, suffering is a choice. Pain is inevitable, suffering is a choice. If there's something that's been done to me in the past, if there's something I've been through 
that I know I've allowed to haunt me. I've allowed to create suffering for me. I've allowed someone to reside in my mind for far too long. And I should have let that thing, I should have let that person go a long time ago. Not because it was nothing, not because I necessarily even have to forgive that person, but because they're living in here rent free. There is no part of me now that kind of looks back on anything that happened in my past with any sense of sorrow whatsoever, none. It's like, yeah, it happened. It's like watching, a, I can say it with no attachment. Yeah, that happened. So fucking what? Like, so what? It doesn't, like, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt now. It's like, I, I don't even, you know, it doesn't, it's just no longer relevant. I trust me now. I'm an adult. It's, uh, it's the weirdest, weirdest feeling to just, to just not carry any pain today. It's, it's mental. It's genius. That's it, that's all I can say. My shoulders are down, I'm smiling, like I'm looking at you, I'm aware that like most of the time I'm looking down or looking to the side, looking to the side. And I look like I've been electrocuted today. <laughs> but I don't care. <clears throat> so that's it. Thank you very, 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 very much. <laughs>